Okay, what I'm going to talk, what, what's the toll pod of Mars about? I've kind of explained briefly what it was around, but as, as you've seen already, um, it's kind of, uh, I suppose I could read this bit of narrative, and this is, this is basically the narrative of, of toll pod, okay, that most people in the trade union movement will know. Some impoverished workers, and I'll stress some words here, some impoverished workers joined the perfectly respectable Methodist led organisation which was dedicated to modern forms of industrial struggle, including the non-violent improvement of wages and conditions. As a result, the local landowners in Tolpuddle, in collaboration with an anti-union government, used a law based on mutiny and implying treason to prosecute a group of innocent men, to transport them to Australia and in so doing martyr them. Okay? A massive peaceful demonstration by the urban working class eventually led to their pardon. A series of demonstrations, 100,000 people in London went to hospital march to support them, stop them being tried and sent to Australia. They failed to be with, they were off. And eventually these people were pardoned and they returned to England to live happily ever after. Okay? <laughs> That's the story that most people know. Okay, and to give you an idea about, if you click on to the next, next slide, this is a kind of um, a slide that shows the top of the martyrs here, and um, I think this is the king turning his arse on them and saying, I'm not interested in you pleading, but notice, you know, chain, okay, that's the image. Yeah. Um, Okay, so that's Toll Puddle. Most people know about that trade union movement. It's um, very well known, there's lots of history done about it. It's a festival every year, thousands of trade unions go down there to celebrate the Toll Puddle Mars. Next slide, if that's all right, Rich. Okay, Captain Swing. Well, I didn't know a lot about Captain Swing until quite recently. But there's a really great book by Eric Popsfall and George Rudak, if you want to read about it, called Captain Swing. And it's definitely worth having a look at. But a very important moment in history where Marx, British Marxist historians started to look into, into some of this kind of hidden history of rural revolt. And Captain Swing writes of 1830 31 are part of this. Now, this picture kind of demonstrates what was going on in the Swing Riots. So I'll quite quickly go through it. Okay, over here is a rioting mob here, yeah? and they've got banners that say Swing Forever. Uh, no, mach no machines, I think it says. And they're kind of wrecking threshing machines here. Right? They're burning a building. Um, down here, there's a peasant, <laughs> in fact not a peasant, a rural, a rural labourer, a rural proletarian in fact, um, carrying a noose and holding it up, and there's people here in the crowd, frightened. There's this haystack, very central haystacks, <coughs> um, and on top of here are some landowners, and um, this one's saying, well I don't think Mr. Swing can come here. And he's going, fire, 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 and falling off the haystack. Okay, and over all the last thing. Over here, there's some people who are involved in politics. You can see it. And uh, this guy's saying, I, re I recommend to this meeting the formation of a yeomanry regiment, which I am willing to take command of. And then if the base peasantry won't starve quietly, we can cut them down like chaff. And then this person's saying, uh, I think that would only make things worse. What we want is reform in Parliament with lower rents, taxes and tithes. You that think of me, hold up your hands. And everyone's going, oh, oh. So this is kind of a sweep of what's going on in the Captain Swing Riots of 1831. And what they were was a huge wave of rural revolt, basically brought on, it's arguably, by the introduction of threshing machines, which meant that large numbers of rural labourers, well, especially in the winter, couldn't get enough wages or work. To, to survive. Plus, it also forced the wages down, bringing the machines in. Plus, there have been two terrible winters, I think in 1828 and 29, which meant there was less work and there was obviously less food around. And the result was, in 1830, in the summer of 1830, a movement began in, in Kent, in Essex, I'm oh, sorry, in Kent, which is just kind of southeast of London, and swept across the country in three or four months. It was a huge movement, people. And to give you some ideas about that, if you go to the next slide. And the next one. Okay, so this is some recent work that's been done on Captain Swing Riots. Every time they look at these events, George, uh, Eric Osborne and George Rude looked at this in the late 60s, and they came up with that there was kind of 1,500 incidents of things like uh, 
machine breaking, uh, various types of riot, extortion, um, robbery, uh, robbery in this case is basically extortion, uh, incendiarism, uh, assaults on poor law officials. They reckon there's about 1,500 incidents. Since then, more work has been done, and we're now up to something like 3,500 incidents occurring across the whole of Britain. Okay, you can see, if you can read this, it's the kind of thing that's going on. You've got to bear in mind things like robbery 252. That's, um, that's a, a loaded term, robbery. Extortion by crowd, collective bargaining by riot is what's going on. So basically all around the country, groups of rural labourers in this wave of disturbances began to confront their landowners, confront the local clergy who were taking their tithes, and either demand the destruction of the machines, demand money, or um, basically show who was in control in, that, in those regions. And that was what was going on across the country. There was all sorts of stuff going on. This is very interesting. Rescue of protesters from custody, 102. So that's clearly people going, you know, getting people back from the, from the local authorities. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can kind of see the scale of this. So these, this is kind of swing incidents plotted out on, on, on Britain. Starts in, Essex, in Kent. Sweeps across southern England in a few, well, it's about a month to get from one side of here to there. You get across Sussex, it took two weeks. It's hit right down Dorset, down to Bristol, all the way through East Anglia. It's a huge movement. You can see this kind of wave of incidents occurring in these months, of October, November, December of 1830 into 1831. Now, this is massive. This is a huge movement. I can't, we don't even know the half of it yet because we haven't got enough, all the evidence in there. It's still being saw, you know, it's recent, two years ago this work was done by people all over the country went to their local parish registered read newspapers and, and used the internet to build it up. So if you go to the next slide you can get an idea about it. So I wrote an essay called um, The Flea and the Elephant, Tolpole and the Swing okay, because to me Tolpole is a completely although it's iconic um, part of history, it's, it's kind of a flea compared to this incident Swing. Now, Tolpole happens in 1834, Swing happens in 1830-31, so they're quite close together as, as a, two events. But, um, you know, it amazed me at the time that, you know, that I could go into a meeting with a bunch of trade unionists, and this, a lot of them were rural organisers for, you know, in, in, in these counties, and that they didn't know anything about Captain Swing, yet they knew about this one incident. So I have to ask yourself, why is that? Why do, we, why do, why do trade unionists or members of the Labour movement or even lefties know? about Tolpole, but they know nothing about swing, they know nothing about this huge wave of class struggle. And I kind of came to a conclusion on <laughs> some thoughts about this, and about which I call ticking the boxes, which applies to all of the things I've talked about. Um, and last, yeah, okay, to start with the first box, innocence and guilt, okay? It's one of the things I talk about when I look at these historic events, innocence and guilt. Okay, the top of the miles are innocent. This lot, these swing rioters and their thousands, if they're tens of thousands, are definitely guilty. Okay? They're really difficult to deal with historically if you're trying to create propaganda for the labour movement. Okay? It doesn't work. You can't have people actually burn things down and run around in mobs extorting your stuff off the welfare or breaking machines. It, it doesn't work. Okay? They're guilty. Okay? And to give you an idea about why I hate the word martyrs when it's applied to toll power, these martyrs have transported me off to Australia. Well, to give you an idea about what happened in Swing, right, the human cost is unbelievable. Okay, there were 2,000 trials during the Swing riots, 2,000 trials. 252 people were sentenced to death, okay, of which 19 were eventually executed. 644 were imprisoned. 500, 500 people were transported to Australia for terms of 7 to 14 years. I have little hope of ever returning. This was the largest group of prisoners ever transported from England for a common crime. Now that's got to be on the historical map, isn't it? The largest group of people ever to be transported for one crime, or a group of crimes, that were associated with one incident. Right, and, and the Hospital of Rude, they kind of get this when they write in their book about Captain Swing. They say, in the south of England, there were whole communities that for a generation were stricken by the blow. From no other protest movement of, the, of its kind, neither from neither the Luddites, nor the Chartists, nor trade unions, was such a bitter price exacted. So these, these, these swing writers, they're the martyrs. They're clearly the martyrs. Calling the toll puddle 
by six people, wherever they were, and so on. Martyrs, it's kind of a joke when you've got this thing behind it. Okay, so that, that, this is one of the things I look at. Innocence and guilt. 